All right, you're back with Arthur Moti on this Sunday evening, and God has allowed me to share another moment with you, and this is the Miracle Next Door, and I am your host, Brother Moti, as some like to call me, or Arthur Moti, and tonight's session is about just explaining the whole purpose of the Heavenly Father. I want to just give, again, once again, I want to thank those that came to the book signing that lets me know that you are truly seeking God. And secondly, I want people to realize the purpose of this book was to show the world to know that God is a living God of today. I was not trying to do this book to, to appease man. If anything, it was to please God because God put that assignment on my heart. Now, I'm so thankful for those that are real recognizing the whole purpose of the Heavenly Father. And then for those that are looking at from a kind of like a business, you know, point of view as, as far as about the book, you have to look at it. I want people do not miss the purpose of the miracle next door. The whole purpose was to let the world know that God is a living God of today, that he exists among us. Look what God had did for me. He took a person that lost his sight, had no sight, but was able to write a book within months. And that is what I want people to see. It may not be the best looking book and, you know, that it, you know, it may not line up where to some man's standard. But what it's about is it's all about the standard of God. My whole ability was doing the will of God. That is the first thing I want people to realize. It's not to say I'm writing this book so I can be this best known author. No, you guys don't miss the point. And and if anything, what I'm, I'm loving is, you know, certain people, and it's very few people that's trying to critique it. What I've noticed through my whole journey, I've I noticed that, People are quick to make their comments and concerns, but they're slow to add resolutions to that situation. Because like I was, I want people to realize, look at the purpose. You're looking at a former banker that is willing to go forward for God as if I was a professional writer, or if I was a professional speaker, or was I was this professional preacher, look what I'm I'm doing for the Heavenly Father. This is just showing you how powerful God is. Do not miss the point. That's where men are going to miss so much from God because they're, they're focused on the, the wrong details of things. They're not looking at God's purpose. They're looking at a view to say, well, how is he able to write a book? Okay, it's not properly lined up. But I want people to realize God looks not only at the heart of man, but he looks beyond man's limitation. There is no limit to God. And like I said in my previous video, you guys, you don't see an entourage of people around me. You don't see churches embracing me. If anything, I've come to learn with my journey with the Heavenly Father, and I'm going to say this now. God told me you're going to see a lot of red tape in man's church because he's not in it. And I didn't understand that in, in the beginning. Yeah, I was like, well, you know, I was wondering, like, what does God mean by that? And as I began, began my journey with the Heavenly Father, I saw exactly that. Man's church, a lot of them are doing it for show. A lot of them are doing it for their own well-being. They're not doing it for the Heavenly Father. They're not putting God first. And that's what I want people to realize. God is more powerful than tra traditional churches. That's why this, uh, one person said in the video, they're saying that there's going to be a shaking in these churches. Right, because man is not putting God in it as they should. And I am not knocking all churches. I'm only going by some of the churches that I've come in contact with. And even my own church of so many years, and they have yet to still embrace. And they're missing the blessings from the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> Pardon me. And 
God is that powerful and God is so merciful and still loving. Like he told me, he says, you still treat them and love them as if they had never heard it you in the beginning. That's how powerful God is. Just like when God told me he was not discredited, we're not discrediting the medical field. But if the medical field would have more faith, put their faith in the Heavenly Father, they would actually have a lot less work to do. But man is so focused on their traditional ways and I can completely understand it because like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't, here I am now, a year ago, I was just exactly where everybody else was at too, where we wasn't really believing. And basically what I'm saying is now I've not only that, I've learned the way to God's heart and I learned how to live for God. I've learned to live with God. There are so many people in the world today that they're living without God in it. And that is a scary thing. And this is why I'm trying to let people know now is you have someone willing to go forward for you and let you know that God is a living God of today. I would not change my experience for nothing. And like I said, I love that some people are focusing on a book. This is just the beginning because there's stages of book still to come. But I want people to buy this book. I want people to embrace the book. Do not get distracted because, like I said, you're missing the whole purpose of the will of God in this book. It was not tend to be this super masterpiece right off the bat. It was to get the word out what God wants me to do. My assignment was to let the world know that God is a living God of today and he wants the world to know that he exists. That was my purpose. It was not to write this this book, but God had blessed me because God saw the gift, the talent that I had as a writer. And he says, watch me bless you. And I'm standing strong because my faith is strong. And I get it that a lot of people cannot really relate because they have not heard the voice of God. They haven't, they didn't get to have the experience that I was just blessed to have with the Heavenly Father. But I want to share my testimony with people. It's not about critiquing the book. If anything, it's me spreading the word of God, because if he's doing this for me, God wants you to know he can do it for many others. You don't have to be all fancy and dressed up. You don't have to be on this level. God says, come as you are, because he's going to come to you whatever stage you are in your life. And that's what I want people to realize and to understand, because I was at a, a level where, like I said, I had no sight. I had no choice but to be led to walk in faith because I had no sight. And I don't want people to, to misquote that and misunderstand it. That's how powerful God is. And I'm standing on that because God stands for me. So take it in. Look at it. I want people to see the rawness of it. It's not about critiquing the work of God, because one thing why man is trying to critique it, I'm telling what God has actually done. This is by the hand, this is handcrafted by the Heavenly Father. This is not American made. This isn't China made. This is God made. This was the work of the Heavenly Father. And look at the, the good points I want people to realize. I'm still going stronger for God, even when my vision is not at a full 100%. I'm still seeing the power of God that is move, moving me forward. It has not discouraged me. And some process, like God told me, don't rush his process. Trust his process. And that's what we need to do because we're in a society where everything is instant. It's fast. It's microwavable. We've got to be, I want this here. I want this now. I want to do it right here, right now. And God says, no. My whole purpose, what God has taught me, was to trust him, to trust in him, and he also has taught me to have more patience because God's timing is far great, is more different than man's timing. God doesn't rush the process. He wants us to trust the process. You've heard from Arthur Motis. They lifted in their faith. I want people to continue to get the book. Do not let people distract you because I'm telling you, do not miss this message because what the purpose of the book is, is to see 
Look what God has done for somebody that had no sight. If I was able to to have God fill my with his with his wisdom to say, I want you to touch the world with your writing. And I'm saying, well, God, how can I write a book and I cannot see? That's what I want people to realize. Look what I did was able to write a book being partially blind. That should be more important than let's critique his work now after the fact. No, because I'm still going forward for God. And look what you don't want people to realize. With me doing a book signing, when I was able to stand in front of those people and speak, that was all the grace of God. That was doing it for God. I'm rewarded by God, so I do not care what man thinks or how they want to critique it or they say, well, this is going to start from there. I'm still going to go forward for God no matter what because my journey for the Heavenly Father, that was me and God's journey. Like God said, that was our walk together. He has blessed me to share this testimony with the world. I didn't sit on this and say, okay, I'm not going to say nothing about it and, and I'm just going to keep that between myself. I said, God, I want people to, to experience the experience that I had with God. And that's what I want people to realize. Do you know how it feels to not only hear the voice of the one that created heaven and earth, that created your own voice? Do you guys know how powerful that is at that moment that it changes your life, that I'm going stronger for Christ? Do you guys know there is more to the story than you think of what you're reading? That's why I want people to know. And I'm going to continue to keep going for God. It's not about me going for man. I'm going for God. I don't care. I don't have I don't have a lot of backing. I don't have, you know, church that I went to encourage me. I don't have that support. But you know what? I'm backed by a kingdom. I'm not worried about the rewards here on earth because I know when my time is up, I know where I'm going. How many people can say they know where they're going when their time is up, when they die? I got that from the Heavenly Father. I know where I'm going and I'm thankful because if it was the other road, if God did not intervene when he did, I wouldn't be here right now. Matter of fact, I want to let people know how scared it is. That is going to down below suffering. And that is not what you want to do. You don't want to go down to the pit of fire and have to have torment. And it's so we're so close to that so easily. And that's what God wants me to let people know is he's given us more than a second chance. He's given us opportunity to make it right with him. He's guiding us. So I'm going to leave it there from that. And I want people to realize what I did, I did for the Heavenly Father. That is the first and foremost thing that I want people to realize. I'm not trying to grab grab the stage. Man's stage is smaller than God's stage. Let me tell you, God's reward is far greater than man. And just to be able to be blessed here, talking and speaking with you now with alertness. Like I said, people. I don't think people realize how it feels to not only to lose your sight, but then being told that you suffer not only a massive stroke, that you had strokes behind it. And then moving forward to 2024, and then you go through another spiritual attack, that a seizure, and God brings you through that. That's the whole purpose. I want people to focus on that. Look what God had brought me through. Not only that, then I'm able to sit here and tell you what the voice of God sounds like. I'm able to tell you how massive God present is. I'm able to share with you and tell you how having a relationship with the Heavenly Father that's truly divine, how graceful it is, how peaceful it is. And I want people to realize, because even while I'm still going through my spiritual journey with the Heavenly Father, He's bringing me through a new season to continue to go for Him. I'm Like I said before, I'm not immune. I still have my earthly life that I'm still dealing with. I, you know, there is not worries for me, but then you got, you know, a little bit of concern from the spouse saying, okay, you know, is the bill still covered? You know, and then you have a, a, a adult young daughter coming of age and she's trying to find her way and she's being misled through certain things. So imagine that where you can't be that disciplinary because you want to stay under authority of God and nobody is worth losing your salvation. And that's what I want people to realize. Now I know how it feels to go and do the will of God. I know what 
Noah, when he created the art, how he felt. I knew what Moses felt like. I know what Moses felt like when he led the children in the in the wilderness to do when God is that powerful that you want to continue to please him. So on that note for the night, I'm going to leave you with that. You might want to say this was the miracle next door. That was part of the podcast. I want people to continue to get the book, continue to, you know, Reach out to me because I want people to know I want to still come to your city. I want to come to your town. I want a fellowship. I want people to know firsthand what God's power is like, what having a divine relationship is like. And not only that, remember when I started this video, I first let people know what I was able to hear, the voice of God. God has given me a powerful testimony that even though those that are around me, there's only very few that are getting it. The rest of the people are still kind of waving their faith. I I get it. Because like I said, a year ago, I was there. I was lukewarm. I wasn't, you know. But look what God has done for me now. And that's what I want people to realize. You got somebody that will stand in front of a crowd of people to, to tell the testimony of how good God has been to me. And like I said, do if you want to look at the physical, look at what God has done for me. I'm not even focusing on that because God is even far greater than that. I know what God has done for me because he has been with me. He is still with me now. Stay lifted in the faith. Take this in for the night. Sleep on what I told you. Remember, do not get caught wrapped up in the man's point of view. Look at God's point of view. Stay lifted. Don't let the miracle go over your head. Take it in. God is real, y'all. Stay lifted. Amen.